Hello everybody and welcome to the <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome to Mozak EV, a channel dedicated to all things electric vehicles, electric vehicle charging and all related technologies. One of the main discussion points when talking to customers about their charge point installation and selecting a charger is whether they want tethered or untethered. So in this video, I want to go through what the differences are and why you might choose one over the other. So firstly, we're going to go over what, what is tethered and what's untethered. Before we do that, if you like the video, make sure you give us a cheeky thumbs up on that like button and subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications of our future videos. So, tethered and untethered. Tethered means it comes with a cable permanently attached to the unit. Untethered means the charge point just has a socket. Well, the various examples on the wall here. Some chargers come only tethered, some come only socketed, and then some have options for both. If you want to look at that, make sure you check out our other video by clicking the card above, um, where we go through our various most popular chargers, which ones are tethered and which ones are untethered. There are a couple of charge points which are a little bit funny in the fact they can also be both. So the easy, for example, is untethered, but it also has an option to lock in your cable, effectively making it tethered. Zappy comes in tethered and untethered versions, but the untethered version, you can also electronically lock a cable in. So those are a couple of funny hybrid examples, but most charge points come in one or the other. So firstly, we'll cover why you would want to go for a tethered charge point over an untethered charge point. I'll just use the Zappy here as an example. Why would you go for a tethered? Well, Personally speaking, being an EV user, tethered is a lot more convenient. So when you get home, all you have to do is take the cable out of its holster, unwrap it and plug it into your EV. When you're finished in the morning, you just stow it away. It's neatly stowed, there's no mess in. So what you have to think about is, you know, imagine a rainy, horrible winter's night, you get home from work, you're tired, and you just want to plug your EV in and get in the house. Then you've got a load of shopping in the boot and your cables underneath all that. If you've got a socketed unit, an untethered unit, you have to go fishing under all that shopping, get the cable out, plug it in both ends, then go in the house. So it's a little bit less convenient, but when you're doing it every day, that little bit of convenience makes a big difference in my opinion. Another advantage of some of the tethered charge points is the fact that they offer a longer cable than you typically... They offer a longer cable than you typically get with your EV. So generally, with your electric vehicle, you get a four or five meter cable. The pod point comes with a seven and a half meter cable as standard. The zap is six and a half meter. Uh, the Hypervolt here has options for 7.5 and 10 metres, as well as the standard 5 metre cable. And the same with the Anderson offers an 8 metre cable. So there's all these additional options which give you a longer cable than you get with your EV and that you would need on a public car park, for example, when you're pulling up at Tesco's or Asda. But if you can't have the charger right adjacent to where you want to park your vehicle, or if you've got a bigger driveway and you want some options and flexibility for where you park your car, these might give you that extra flexibility. Obviously, you could just buy a longer ch charging cable off uh, a website or a supplier such as ourselves. However, they are extremely expensive as they get longer. So bear that in mind. Finally, more and more we've seen that manufacturers are not giving away cables with their customers' cars. Uh, this is a little bit cheeky, manufacturers saving a bit of money. But if you're looking at buying a separate charging cable for your car because you didn't get one with it, they're quite expensive. You're looking well over £100. So 
if you haven't got an extra cable, it's going to be much cheaper to go for a tethered charger than it is buying an untethered charger and the cable separately. So why would you look at getting an untethered charge point? In our experience, one of the main reasons people want to go for an untethered charge point is because of the looks. They don't like the fact the cable is stowed around the unit as it does on the wall box or the zappy, or in the case of the army, it's on a hook next to the unit. They just don't like the way it looks. They don't want to see a cable on the front of the house. So they go for something small and neat with just a socket and they're happy to get the cable out every day and plug it in. There are a couple of other reasons why people have gone for socketed charge points, non-tethered charge points. If you've got an older EV, such as a Nissan Leaf or a Mitsubishi Outlander FEV that has a Type 1 charge point on the vehicle, we would probably recommend, instead of getting a tethered with a Type 1 cable on it, which can be swapped out in the future at additional cost, you might want to consider a socketed unit. Your public charging cable that you get with your EV will be able to plug into this. And if you do get a second electric vehicle down the road, which has a type two charge point on it, you can use that in the same charge point. Obviously, you need to think ahead about what you might be doing in the future with your EVs. If you don't understand about the difference between type one and type two sockets and the history behind it, make sure you check out our video in the card above. If you're getting an EV and you're not sure what type of charging point it has on it, we're always here to help. Finally, the last reason why you might go for a untethered unit with a socket instead is if you need a super long cable. Uh, we have had customers who've bought 15 meter long cables and you're just not going to get that with a tethered charge point. So hopefully this gives you an explanation of why you pick one over the other. Um, and narrows down your choices for your charge point. Obviously, the experts like us are here to help if you're still confused or you still want some advice. But overall, I hope it was useful. If it was, make sure you give us a cheeky thumbs up on that like button. Subscribe, hit the bell icon. If you're considering switching energy suppliers, make sure you check out our Octopus referral code. Check out our other social media links. And thanks very much for watching.